Hello, I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm Tom West, and this is called Life in the God Lane. Hope you'll subscribe to it. Share this video with someone else. It could, if we're teaching the Bible, it could change their life. Give me a thumbs up, make comments, pray, ask God to use these videos, and do everything you can to help me get this out to more people. It can make a difference in their lives. I call this message, The Authority of Jesus. And it comes from Mark, the first chapter, verses 21 through 28. Folks, I, I have experienced a person exercising his authority before. I was inducted into the Army on May 28, 1968, starting basic combat training early in June of that year, 53 years ago. Immediately, we met our senior drill instructor, SDI. He is the drill sergeant over the four drill sergeants who were in charge of each of the four platoons that make up a company. Now, I can't remember his name, but I can see him in my mind's eye. Probably about 30 years old, maybe his early 30s. He was short, probably five, seven, uh, five feet, seven inches tall. He was cut and buffed, and he was a professional soldier to the max. His rank was Sergeant First Class, that's an E7. By 1968, he'd already done two combat tours in Vietnam. This guy was a warrior, and he was exactly the kind of guy that you would want training your troops to go to Vietnam or to any war, for that matter. Each day, a uniform of the day was posted on the way into the mess hall, which is the first thing you did in the morning. It was required that we fall out in the uniform of the day a little bit later after breakfast uh, for, for a formation. And it, you had to have the uniform of the day on. It was very important. One guy was trying to prove that he was insane so he could get discharged. So when the uniform of the day was fatigues and a baseball cap, this guy would report for formation in full field gear with his with his uh, backpack and his steel pot, that's your helmet, and his weapon, that's your rifle. He, he fell out with the whole thing like he was going to war, you know. The SDI would get in his face and send him right back in to get the right uniform of the day on. About the third time this guy pulled this stunt, the SDI got right in his face and he informed him in no uncertain terms. He said that the next time you do this, your caboose, not the word he used, would belong to him. He was exercising his authority. In Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28, we see Jesus exercise his authority. I want to give you the historical account of that passage. Jesus had just called his first disciples by the Sea of Galilee. They went up the coast to the seaside town of Capernaum. Uh, Peter was from Capernaum, and Jesus and his disciples used the city of Capernaum uh, as kind of headquarters for their ministry early on. On the Sabbath, Jesus went to the local synagogue and he taught. Now remember that the center of religious life for the Jewish nation was the temple in Jerusalem. While synagogues were like the local congregations for worship, out in all the different communities, and, and the Jews would have community there, and they would worship there and be taught there. The people were amazed at Jesus' teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not like their teachers of the law. Now, while Jesus was teaching, a man in the crowd who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out. And what that means in the Greek language, he started hollering, okay? He started hollering. The evil spirit was crying out and hollering through the man, wanting to know what Jesus wanted to do with them, the evil spirits. The evil spirit wanted to know if Jesus had come to destroy them, meaning the evil spirit. Did you come to destroy us? Then the evil spirit said that he knew who Jesus was, the Holy One of God. Right, evil spirit. Jesus is the Holy One of God, and that's a big point of all the issues. Jesus told the evil spirit to be quiet emphatically. It'd be like you or me telling someone to shut up, okay? And what happened next? 
the evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The language suggests that the man went into wild spasms and shouted wildly and the spirit had to leave. The people in the synagogue were amazed, make that stunned and started asking each other, man, what is this? What is this about? They experienced a new teaching with authority that they'd never seen before. Jesus exercised such authority that he told the evil spirits to leave and they obeyed him. He had absolute unquestioned authority over evil spirits. In fact, Jesus just simply had authority like no one had ever experienced. There's a reason for that. There are two sources for Jesus' authority. First, Jesus exercised authority in his teaching. In Mark 1, it says, the people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Uh, if a traveling rabbi, rabbi should show up at a local synagogue on the Sabbath, he'd be invited to be the, the guest teacher that day. This happened all the time, and that's exactly what Jesus is doing here. Most rabbis were teachers of the law, and the basis of their teaching was quoting what some noted scholar said about the law of Moses and expounding on the Jewish law, on, on, and the basis of it was what other guys said about it. And what it ended up being, it ended up as man-made rules that these dudes cooked up. Remember that Jesus, this is so different, he is, he is the word that spoke the world into existence and took on flesh in the Son of God and Messiah. In John chapter 1, verse 14, it identifies him as that word that took on flesh. It says, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Jesus spoke word, the word of God because he was the word of God. Imagine the authority of that. He wasn't telling people what some guy thought was important. He was giving people word from the word of God who took on flesh as the son of God himself. He spoke with the authority of God because he is the word of God. So what kind of stuff was Jesus saying to the people? That's a good question. We don't know exactly what he said in the synagogue in Capernaum in AD 30, but we have four gospels chock full of his teaching historical documents chock full of the teaching, the verbal teaching of Jesus. If you would like the authoritative truth about things that Jesus taught about, just check out what Jesus taught in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In fact, as we teach through this gospel of Mark, we will hear word from Jesus that is teaching with power over and over because it's the word of God. One, one of our problems in 2021 is that of worry. D did you know that Jesus taught about worry? He did significant teaching about worry. So why do you suppose he did that? He did that because a big part of the human condition has to do with worry. People worry. They always have and they always will. It's a part of our fallen condition. Never have we had more counselors, professionally trained counselors to help people with worry than we do today. Never have we had more medication to help people with worry than we have today. And never has, has there been a record of more keep people using it than today. What do people keep doing? They keep worrying, we all do. Just read Matthew 6, 25 through 35. I'm not going to take the time to do that now. I'll kind of describe to you what it says. See what Jesus said about worry. He taught us not to worry about our life. Don't worry about food and clothing, where you're going to live or what you're going to, how you're going to pay your bills. Don't worry about those things. He, he tells us to look at the birds. Look at the birds of the air. You don't see a bird fussing about his bank account in the morning. Birds don't do that. 
You don't see him fussing about what he's going to wear, what he's going to eat. Jesus makes it clear that we are much more valuable to God than, than, more, than birds. We mean more to God than birds. The point is, God's going to take care of us. In Matthew 6, 27, Jesus asks, Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Trust Jesus' word here. You will never add time to your life by worry, but you can certainly subtract time from your life by worrying. When I teach these words of Jesus, whose authority is being exercised? Not Tom's. It's not my authority. It's Jesus' authority that is brought to bear on daily life on this planet. And you know what? We need a lot more of it. A lot more of it. That's why I have this channel, Life in the God Lane. We need to get the word of Jesus out to more and more people. Second, Jesus exercised authority as the Holy One of God. The evil spirit knew who Jesus was, which is why he was fearful of Jesus. He's scared of Jesus. He wanted to know if Jesus came to destroy him. And he said to Jesus, hey, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. That's right. That's who he is, the Holy One of God. It is important to see that the evil spirit knew that he was done for, done for when he encountered the Holy One of God, Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus had authority over evil in a synagogue in Capernaum in AD 30. And you know what? Jesus has authority over evil today. Why? His holiness as the Holy One of God. That's a profound thing that the evil spirit recognized. Are there evil spirits today? That's a good question. Folks, the spirit world is just really, really simple. The spirit world is one of two options, holy or evil. Holy and evil do not coexist. They cannot occupy the same space. Hebrews 10.10 10 puts it this way. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. See, the sacrifice of Jesus' body on the cross rids us of sin, paying for it in full, forgives all of our sins, and it transfers the holiness of Jesus Christ, which is complete, to us. Transfers his holiness to our life, to our account. Why is that important? Because Jesus' holiness has authority over evil. Evil can sneak in from time to time. Work on us, but not in us. But its control is gone when Jesus' holiness is transferred to you and you begin to change from the inside out because his holiness is controlling you and evil is gone. You don't get perfect right away, but over time his holiness transforms you into the image of Christ in the way you operate. Remember what John the Baptist said in Mark 1.8, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with what? the Holy Spirit. Jesus' new beginning is about baptizing us with the Holy Spirit. Why? Well, among many reasons, the holiness of Jesus comes into us and has authority over evil to defeat it in our lives. We lived in a house once with a very small coat closet inside the front door. And, and um, you know, I could actually fit into that coat closet, but just barely. But if somebody else came in and wanted to fit in that coat closet, I would have to get out. See, what God, when God's holiness gets in, evil has to get out. There's not room for both of them. The Holy One of God has authority over evil. And when he occupies your space, your life, the evil one has to get out and can't operate from the inside and control you anymore. Jesus still exercises his authority today in his teaching and in his holiness. Let's go back to my senior drill instructor in basic combat training. On day four, we were supposed to fall out in full field gear, steel pots, weapons, just like we were going to war, back on our back, about 90 pounds worth of stuff. The knucklehead fell out in fatigues and a baseball cap. <laughs> the SDI exercised authority over the guy. He grabbed him. 
He threw him in the latrine. That's army lingo for bathroom. <clears throat> we heard some banging and thumping from inside, accompanied by some screaming and some yelling. A couple days later, when the knucklehead came back from sick call, after having recovered from his fall down the steps completely, he was all squared away. The, the SDI had exercised authority over him. When Jesus exercises authority over us today by his teaching and by his holiness inside us, we come back all squared away. He starts fixing us. It takes time, but he starts fixing us and we come back all squared away. One point is desperately important. Jesus will never impose his authority in this life. We have to volunteer for it by by surrendering to and enlisting in his lordship. When we do, he will exercise his authority by his teaching and holiness, and he will get us all squared away. That is called life change. Let's pray. Father, help us recognize the authority of Jesus. And Father, I pray that this message could get out to more and more people so that they could have the authority of Jesus work in their life and change them from the inside out and transform them and save them for eternity. So I pray that you would use this in my life and in everybody else's life and get it out to more people. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Hope you'll subscribe, share this message with other give, others, give me thumbs up, make comments, and pray asking God to use this to help other people. I will see you on Tuesday sometime.